So uh, let's uh, have a closer look at this cancer ETF. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. And do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So here we have it under the sectors, uh, under healthcare, cancer immunotherapy ETF. So 7.6-ish uh, percent from the 52-week low, but we have been through a minus 44% pullback. So the reason why this ETF could, you know, turn some uh, uh, heads uh, going, fo going forward, that is uh, related to the very drastically escalating conflict in regards to Ukraine. It is very important to be aware that the escalation is definitively happening on both sides of this uh, conflict. And uh, looking at it historically, this can seriously get out of hand. Really seriously. Uh, the thing is that um, there's been increased talk about uh, nuclear threats. Um, and uh, one of the things uh, that uh, happens uh, after uh, nuclear events, that is a spike in cancer. So I do think that uh, worries about cancer are going to go up very, very substantially uh, going forward. I think the probability of a full-scale nuclear war is uh, redu reduced. Uh, well, it's it's low, but I do think that there's there is actually a risk of uh, demonstrations, um, which is basically what we saw in uh, in terms of you know Japan after you know uh, well at the close of World War Two, we did not see a full full blown nuclear war, but we did see. Um, and the demonstration that um, those cool those tools uh, could be actually used as a deterrent, like in the real uh, life. So, yeah, ex we live in an extremely dangerous situation, and yeah, it, it's really <laughs> dramatic, frankly. In terms of this ETF, yeah, the reason why um, the current technical setup is interesting is in terms of this double bottom that worked out in a very bullish direction. You could make a strong case that we currently have something that looks very double bottom ish. Uh, so, this one simply has a recent history of uh, having these double bottoms that work out. Further, uh, if we do draw in some uh, time cycles, we do have time cycles, but they have differed in duration. But you see yourself that at least within this time frame here, rise, decline, rise, decline, rise, decline, it did have these time cycles. But the latest uh, time cycle here, it's been much bigger than the previous ones. Anyway, we are definitively towards the low end of uh, the range. Beyond the double bottom, uh, you could make a strong case that we have horizontal support. So let me draw that in. Draw in horizontal support. So it's approximately around uh, here. So let me draw it in. Support, 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 and also support way back here as well. So that is the bullish technical setup. Going here to the daily data points, uh, we do see that you know the bears they are definitively in control. Uh, so we don't have any like any sign at the moment that the bulls are trading uh, a major double bottom. So it's this is like a hypothetical uh, future development. Uh, looking at uh, the RSI, now uh, we are extremely oversold. So purely from a perspective of mean reversion, uh, one would expect at least uh, some bounce. Uh, in terms of the PPOs as well, extremely oversold. The previous times we were this far away from the red 200 week moving average was back here, and that formed a very key low. Daily data points. Uh, we do actually see that um, even though, so you, looking here at accumulation distribution, we saw this collapse here. But there is a bullish divergence between price and accumulation distribution. So that's interesting. Looking at you know, the RSI, we also see that you know there's been some... Uh, uh, we have been higher, uh, not that far back, but we are in a bit of a risk territory in terms of the RSI. Meaning the, um, if the bulls do not get enough backup, then we could certainly see that uh, this low end of RSI is actually the current uh, overbought levels for this ETF. So that is the thing about any kind of security is that they can develop their own overbought and oversold levels. So if we go here to the laboratory, 
So I do think that the line in the sand here, uh, the key part of uh, the thesis is double, uh, okay, no, double bottom. Yeah, so let's just remove the cycle bit. Uh, because we did have time cycles before, but the current time cycle is uh, much wider, so it's a bit uncertain, well, uncertain whether we are in a new uh, new time cycles basically have developed or not. But yeah, double bottom, and you could also say that we have um, horizontal support, like that. In terms of giving the technicals a rating, I do think one could make a decently bullish case here. So I will give this one a 5. Next on the list, uh, we will look at seasonality. So here towards uh, the right, we do have the average over the last uh, five years here. Uh, so we do have some price data uh, to calculate uh, seasonality on. Uh, we do see that there usually is some weakness here heading towards early March, but then uh, that usually marks the low point, and then we strengthen uh, heading towards uh, July. Looking here to the left, we do see that February is a decent month, but March um, it is the week, one of the weakest months. April, May, June are stronger. Uh, but as we saw uh, to the right here, is that we usually have the weakness early in March. Over the last eight years, February is uh, decent, but March is weak. But then April and May and um, June are, are strong, well, stronger. In terms of giving the seasonality here a rating, I, so this is on the 28th of February. So the coming seasonality, like the, mo the in closest proximity to us, is not really that bullish. Um, so that is a bit of a caveat here. So I, will, I have to like subtract that from the seasonality. So I, I will give the seasonality here... Uh, to, so it is. It is very. It is weakly bullish. Next on the list is fundamentals. So here I am comparing the Cancer ETF with the XLV, which is you know the broader healthcare spider ETF. Uh, we do see that when we go here to performance, and look at uh, beta. Beta is definitively higher. Higher, so more volatility. Um, it's a bit difficult to get you know good price earnings data on these kinds of ETFs. Uh, looking at you know the dividend yield, it is uh, one percent, uh, so it is less than the XLV. And here you can see the volatility. So yeah, longer volatility, longer term volatility is definitively higher than the XLV. Looking here at you know the holdings, so here you can see uh, the market cap breakdown. So you do have some decent balance here between the small, large, and mid caps. Here you can see the regional breakdown, so very dominated by USA. So now we are looking at relative performance. Okay, so here we have long term 55% uh, correlation with the S&P 500, 58% uh, with the XLV, you know, the healthcare ETF. Then we have minus 42% with the 10 year yield and minus 83% with the dollar index. Daily data points. Minus 7% with SPY, uh, th yeah, 3, 5, 8, 3, 4 ish, 3, 4 ish percent with XLV, and then minus 83% with the 10 year yield, and uh, minus 75% with the dollar index. So, yeah, yeah, we do see that looking long term and short term, uh, the strongest correlation we do have here is with the XLV in terms of like the positive one. But when it comes to the negative, uh, very strongly correlated here with the dollar index. So let's quickly here do a technical analysis of the XLV to see what is uh, happening with that ETF. So yeah, in terms of that, the XLV, we do see an interesting situation here. Let me just draw that in. So prior uh, support has now in all likelihood become uh, prior, you know, current you know, solid resistance. So you see here, the red 200 day moving average, it's been a big deal for quite some time as support. But there's a big but. If we zoom in here, we do see that the red 200 day moving average has now unfortunately become, okay, that was uh, thin, become resistance. 
that is an issue here for the bulls, especially given that you know the futures are looking weak uh, today. Let's quickly look at the dollar index, the futures, like that. Yeah, so the dollar is currently, you know, it it is ha it, it it is in this major zone where there's been battles between the bulls and the bears in the past. So yeah, the dollar is a bit of it's in, it's in very noisy territory basically. It needs a strong catalyst to to break through these prior resistance levels. Here we are looking at you know the Cancer ETF against the XLV, you know, broader healthcare, and we can clearly see that. Uh, uh, the cancer ETF has been in a massive downtrend against the XLV, meaning it it has been you know substantially and systematically underperforming. Uh, you could argue that the underperformance has been quite ferocious for uh, quite some time here. Uh, we do see that um, you know if you look at this protracted period of underperformance, and also this one uh, after that period, we did see some trend change. Um, in this case here, in the opposite direction, in this case, it was more of a consolidation period. But yeah, you could argue that, you know, the current underperformance has been overextended and the the bigger picture backdrop now in terms of, you know, the, all the talk about, you know, nuclear threats, it's very likely going to, um, to lead to an interest in cancer. Um, cancer is very likely to become a big topic. Uh, looking quickly here at you know the seasonality, we do see that uh, the Cancer ETF it tends to underperform um, the XLV. It just does. That has been the trend. Okay. Now let's look at the XLV. So let's draw that in XLV against the SPY. Yeah. So you do see that uh, there's been different you know trends throughout the time here. Um, so here we have a massive uptrend, but overall, uh, if we draw that, yeah, let me just draw that in with this massive tool. So you can see that for quite some time now, it, you know, throughout this entire phase here, there's been, you know, lower highs and lower lows. So we have basically been in this pretty substantial uh, downtrend. We just have. So the XLD has been underperforming um, the S&P 500. Okay. Uh, there is actually a very interesting parallel period. Um, so let me draw that in. You see here that this time frame here looks the pat from a pattern recognition perspective. It looks very similar to this. So this here it looks similar to this. Uh, and uh, so let's actually measure how long the previous period was. Let us measure it. So if we measure from here to here, yeah, that was 2,254 days, uh, approximately here. This is 2,695 days. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously there's no like guarantee that we are going to see like a huge strengthening uh, of the XLB, but, but I think that, you know, you see the pattern yourself. We have previously seen these uh, spikes in XLV uh, after similar uh, downtrends. Looking here at the seasonality quickly. Yeah, we do see here that uh, the XLV actually has a tendency over the last five, seven and 10 years to form lows against the SPY and actually outperform heading here towards uh, the 22nd of June. So the coming period usually actually is bullish for the XLV. Yeah, the score I gave in terms of the fundamentals was a three. I do think that um, sort of like the news narrative uh, is a key part of fundamental analysis. And there's there's a, clearly a backdrop here that does a lot of marketing, free marketing for cancer stocks. Just does. There is a genuine concern about nuclear threats and um, the risk of, of actual demonstrations. Uh, is high and it has increased due to the sanctions. Sanctions are extremely dangerous. If you look at uh, the history of war, you will see that uh, sanctions are one of the key triggers of wars. There's a certain line in the sand for uh, Russia. We don't know where that line is, but if the sanctions are too um, 
too intense. And then, um, yeah, because when people are pushed into a corner, there's two reactions. You have fight or flight. And if the reaction uh, from, uh, you know, Russia is fight, then um, yeah, that could be very bad. Okay, so in terms of relative performance, it was a bit messy because the Cancer ETF has definitively been underperforming uh, for quite some time. Then again, we did see also that the XLV also has been underperforming the SPY, but uh, when we saw that similarity between the current period and the previous one, which was followed by a spike actually in the XLV, meaning XLV outperforming the SPY for quite some time, there is the possibility of that happening. happening. And we did also see that the seasonality for the XLV was strong, uh, and XLV you know, was correlated nicely with the Cancer ETF. So in terms of relative performance, looking forward now, I think there's reasons to feel a bit bullish here for this ETF. Um, but we don't have any evidence yet. So to sum up my take here for this ETF, um, we do end up with a score here of three. So I'm feeling more bullish than bearish. Uh, the key part of this thesis is horizontal support and the double bottom. If those were to go out the window, then the thesis would be uh, severely wounded. The technicals are interesting, seasonality is okay, uh, fundamentals. Uh, one of the stronger points beyond the technicals, given that we, there, it's highly likely that there will be a certainly increased interest in you know, the theme of cancer going forward, and that can obviously be bullish for these stocks. Uh, of course, the the best thing would be would be that this stock, well, the best thing for the world is that the ETF crashes, right? That um, and there will, will, will not be a concern for nuclear war. Uh, but um, yeah, I do think that th there is extreme risk here on the horizon. And this is one of those ETFs that would be uh, affected if, um, if things uh, really hit uh, the fan.